How well can AI predict the future? That is the question behind a brand new benchmark that's getting a lot of attention. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. Today we are exploring a new way of trying to understand the frontier of AI capabilities. Right now, there are a lot of questions around AI progress in the future. Now, as I've mentioned before, I think this is a summer phenomenon. Each year, we get a different sort of AI skeptic narrative. This year, the initial perceived lack of progress of GPT-5 opened up the space for a whole set of usually mainstream media articles like this one from the New York Times. Companies are pouring billions into AI. It has yet to pay off. There was another one in the New Yorker. What if AI doesn't get much better than this? Now, part of the challenge with this, if you are a regular listener, you will have heard me talk about this before, is actually not a problem of model capacity, but a problem of the saturation of benchmarks. In other words, as we get closer to the upper bounds of performance on all of our standard benchmarking tests, our perception of increased performance is impacted by the fact that we only went from a 92 to a 93 versus previous iterations of AI that might have gone from a 70 to an 80. And this is a real problem not from a beauty contest kind of standpoint, but because it's hard for us to understand progress if we don't have good ways to measure it. Now, luckily, there are lots of interesting efforts to create new benchmarks that are not yet saturated. The ArcAGI prize, for example, is one we talk about a lot here, and ArcAGI itself is now actually three different versions. The most recent ArcAGI 3 was just announced a couple of months ago and is what they call an interactive reasoning benchmark. They write, Traditionally, to measure intelligence, static benchmarks have been the yardstick, but they do not have the bandwidth required to measure the full spectrum of intelligence. Interactive reasoning benchmarks, or IRBs, test for a much broader scope of capabilities. Exploration, perception plan action, memory, goal acquisition, and alignment. And basically, ArcAGI leverages game environments to test this sort of interactivity. Okay, so the point here is that there is finally some interesting work being done on new benchmarks, but it's still really nascent. Now, meanwhile, there's been this other interesting thing going on. I'm sure that if you've spent any time in and around any sort of media recently for the last year, at least going back to before last year's U.S. presidential election, an important social phenomenon has been the rise of prediction platforms. Two of the best known are Kalshi and Polymarket, and these provide platforms for people to bet on a huge range of different phenomenon. For example, if you want to get a pulse of what people are thinking about the AI race, go check out the tech section of Polymarket. With 6 million in volume, for example, which company has the best AI model at the end of August, Google is at 94%. And what's interesting, of course, about prediction markets is that they often tell a different story than the conventional wisdom. Now, the people who are very bullish on prediction markets like the fact that this is, in fact, a market, that people are putting up real money behind their predictions, basically thinking that that is a pure expression of actual belief than just what you say on Twitter or Instagram or whatever. The Wall Street Journal has recently noted that the prediction markets are very interested in the future of AI. In an article over the weekend, they wrote, Gamblers now bet on AI models like racehorses. Prediction platforms are turning the AI arms race into a high-stakes game. The article begins, Now that AI developers are getting paid like pro athletes, it's fitting that fans are placing big bets on how well they're doing their jobs. Now, it's important to note that while the trend may be rising enough to capture the Wall Street Journal's attention, the market is still fairly small. Trading volume across AI prediction markets so far in August is around $20 million. Not nothing, but also not breaking the bank. And yet still, the volume on AI-related trades is up 1,000% since the beginning of the year. The article also explains why people actually like this as a source of signal outside of just the fact that people are putting their money on it. Basically, the fact that people are putting their money on these markets tends to lead them to go down rabbit holes looking for interesting information that might influence their decision. In other words, the prediction market bulls basically argued that it's not just collective wisdom, it's the collective wisdom of a group who has a financial incentive to really, really research and try to understand what's going on. Okay, so all of this is the interesting background to today's story. We've got, on the one hand, saturation of benchmarks and the emergence of some new ones, and on the other hand, the rise of prediction markets. Well then, friends, why not combine the two? Just a few days ago, a new project out of the University of Chicago called Profit Arena launched. They tweeted, Introducing Profit Arena, the AI benchmark for general predictive intelligence. That is, can AI truly predict the future by connecting today's dots? In their introductory blog post, they write, Forecasting is one of humanity's most original and most powerful intellectual pursuits, the spark that gave rise to science and the engine behind modern economics and finance. 
While today's AI models can ace bar exams and outperform humans in math competitions, a deeper question remains poorly understood. Can AI systems reliably predict the future by connecting the dots across existing real-world information? And that is the goal of Profit Arena. It's a new benchmark that evaluates this sort of predictive intelligence through, as they call it, live updated real-world forecasting tasks. Now, the team behind Profit Arena point out that forecasting has for some time been one of the main points of machine learning. Obviously, these systems are ubiquitous across the enterprise in these very small and discrete sort of ways. So they write, what's new and what makes the challenge this time different? The new frontier, they say, is building general-purpose AI systems that make accurate forecasts across a wide range of domains, potentially without domain-specific fine-tuning or access to specialized data sets. They argue that this kind of open domain forecasting requires capabilities that are on the very edge of what today's AI systems can do, including probabilistic reasoning, i.e. quantifying uncertainty, maintaining calibration, and performing statistical thinking, causality, causal reasoning and modeling of how events unfold and influence one another, and critical thinking, i.e. curating relevant information and assessing the credibility of sources. So how does the platform actually work in practice? Well, Profit Arena is taking advantage of these new prediction platforms like Calsheet. First, they curate events from those platforms, selecting for events that are popular, i.e. there's a lot of people participating, so they're going to give better signal around how AI does against humans because there's enough humans doing it to actually get that information. They're also looking for a certain diversity of different events that are balanced across domains, including politics, economics, sports, science, entertainment. And they're looking for events that are recurring, things like weekly price movement or earnings announcement to, as they put it, support consistency and comparability. Then for each event, the AI models are allowed to go gather relevant information. And with the same context, each AI model then submits a structured forecast, which they describe as a probability distribution over all possible outcomes accompanied by a detailed rationale. Quote, these rationales are made visible to users who can assess their value, share feedback on the usefulness of news sources, and contribute alternative information to observe how forecasts shift in response. Those two steps are then repeated for each event over time until the outcome actually happens. Now, when it comes to performance, they have two sets of evaluation metrics, absolute metrics and relative metrics. The absolute metrics utilizes the Briar score, which they describe as a widely adopted proper scoring rule that measures how accurately and confidently AI models predict probabilistic outcomes. And then they also have this concept of average return. They write, to bridge predictions with real-world actionability, we also introduce an innovative class of average return metrics derived from utility theory. These metrics simulate a scenario where practitioners consistently use AI-generated probabilities to inform their betting decisions in real prediction markets. Users can flexibly adjust risk preferences to explore various betting strategies, offering a practical insight into the economic value generated by LLM-driven forecasts. So basically, the absolute metrics in the Briar score are just about how accurate they were, and the relative metrics or average return is all about how well people would be able to use those metrics to make money in the markets. They also have a couple other supplementary metrics and go in deep in a secondary blog on their approach to scoring for those of you who are interested. Interestingly, they point out that the Briar score or the measure of statistical accuracy and calibration does not always match real-world betting performance. For example, Grok's models score much higher in the statistical accuracy than they do in the average return assessment. So what are some of their early findings? Overall right now, O3 Mini ranks highest in the average return, above second place GPT-5, while GPT-5 ranks highest on the Briar score. They've found that models show distinct personalities, with some being more aggressive and others being more conservative. And one of the areas where there's a big gradation is that different models show differences in how they handle uncertainty in their sources. One example that they shared was around a prediction for Major League Soccer. In that particular example, while the market was pricing in the chance of a Toronto FC win at 11%, O3 Mini saw a 30% win chance. Arena writes, the model bet on Toronto because of positive expected value and earned a 9x return when Toronto won. This is AI finding a real edge over human crowds. And by the way, I think this also demonstrates why the average return profile could look different than just the raw accuracy. If a model is not just good in pure terms, but good at figuring out when the existing conventional wisdom is off, there's more room to arbitrage that into expected value when it comes to these prediction markets. I think one thing that's super interesting about this to me is that given how saturated all of these other models feel right near the top of all the benchmarks, they really have wildly divergent approaches to their reasoning. For example, on the question of whether AI regulation would become federal law this year, Quen 3 saw a 75% chance with their aggressive interpretation, 
Llama 4 Maverick had only a 35% chance, a conservative approach that cited the complexity, and GPT-4.1 gave it a 60% chance that was basically a balanced middle ground sort of call. And again, all of this is using the same data, just really different approaches to reasoning. The response to this has been really positive. Tung Yaljin summed up about a thousand versions of this tweet when he said, the kind of benchmark that's actually useful, very cool. And indeed, if there was just one takeaway from the AI community so far, it's that this is exactly the sort of interesting new type of benchmark we really need right now. Neon Blue CEO Stephen Alhaj writes, The reason recent model releases are disappointing is because of benchmark hacking. Company optimizes their model for the benchmark and says this is 50% smarter than the others. Profit Arena is cool because I think we can all agree we have AGI when AI can predict the future. Simon Smith writes, Love this new AI benchmark based on predictions because it's one, practical, two, always up to date, and three, impossible to game. Also interesting to see that it's not always the smartest models that are most profitable. Model personality matters too. Some of the folks in the AI safety community use this as a moment to decry the strand of denialists who think that AI isn't real. Quoting a theoretical skeptic, the AI safety memes account says, AI just memorizes and regurgitates. Okay, buddy, then explain to me how it can predict the literal future better than humans. Dan Hendricks, meanwhile, points out, quote, a new benchmark shows that AIs out of the box can perform similarly to or better than prediction markets at forecasting future world events. Interestingly, some forecasters will say AIs are not yet human level, despite AIs doing better than the typical forecaster or prediction market for a long time. Now, I thought OpenAI's Noam Brown had a really interesting comment. I recently chatted with a VC who believed AGI was coming and would disrupt a lot of jobs, but not their job. Of course, AIs could write code and review contracts, but making accurate, calibrated predictions about the future, that's uniquely human. And this is why I always say on this show that I really believe that AI is, in fact, coming for all of our jobs. Not that it will replace us, but I do think that all of our jobs will look different in the future. Now, the one other strand of conversation, which does seem important and I think will get larger in the future, is the relationship between predictions and self-fulfilling prophecy. Alan Zhao writes, The decisions made by humans will increasingly get influenced by AI. Instead of asking, did the model predict correctly, we may need to ask, did the model's prediction cause the outcome? Tomer Glick also writes, Profit Arena is a strong benchmark, yet predictions influence outcomes. When models publish probabilities, incentives shift, traders react, and dynamics change. The feedback loop persists until the signal is arbitraged away and performance saturates. In other words, the presence of the benchmark and the approach itself actually creates a new set of challenges. Still, overall, I am very excited to see this sort of exploration and experimentation in the benchmark space. I think it's extremely important for us to actually understand not only how models are progressing, but how they work. So great job to the team at Profit Arena. I will be very much looking forward to seeing how the project evolves and how new models perform. For now, though, that's going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Until next time, peace.